Okay, so today we're looking at uh, Required Practical 2, and it's the one where we're looking for the number of cells that are undergoing mitosis in a root tip squash. What does that mean? Well, when you have a root that's growing, it's only actually the tip that's undergoing mitosis. It's only the tip that is dividing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove one of those, and I'm gonna take the whole thing. The reason why I'm gonna take the whole thing is because I don't want another, if I just cut up the root tip, when another student comes along, they will also think that that is the root tip and also use the same end. So we don't want that to happen. So if I remove the whole thing, then they know that each of those still have their root tip intact. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it in acid. If I'm around acid, I need to wear my safety glasses. Things you will have been asked to do is to research several methods of uh, this procedure and the reason why is because they each bring advantages and disadvantages. The one that AQA suggests uses five molar acid. This one uses one molar acid. Why would I have chosen this one? I'm going to put my root tip in the acid. Why am I using acid? The acid is heated. Why is it heated? What is it doing? I'm going to pop that inside there. Now, a little bit tricky because it will go all the way in. Make sure it's fully submerged. I'm going to use some tweezers to make sure it goes down all the way. Now I'm going to start timing. I'm going to leave it in there for, for four minutes. Left my root tip for three minutes and 40 seconds because I know it's going to take me a few seconds to come from the water bath and take it out. I can't get my uh, root tip out this way. I don't have a lot of give with the tweezers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I can just pour it out and into there it goes. I'm quickly, without delay, going to take it out with the tweezers. I'm gonna pop it on there and I'm going to rinse it. I'm going to rinse my root tip with the water. And I want to put plenty of water on there. One student, earlier only put a bit of water and when she came back the water had dried off and her root tip was stuck to the watch glass and um, what i need to do now is i need to cut three millimeters from the end because that's the actively dividing root tip i need to make sure i can see which end i'm going to cut which end is the root tip i can see this one goes into a bit of an apex goes to a point, so I know that's my root tip, so I'm gonna cut that there, okay? So that's getting rinsed. Okay, so there's no real rush or urgency now. I can take my time about this because I've separated my root tip, I've stopped the reaction because I've removed the acid, and I'm gonna take that out using some tweezers, and I'm gonna pop it onto my slide. There, it's tiny, so you need to make sure you don't lose it. There's water on there, and I need to add my stain now, but I really don't want to dilute my stain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of tissue paper, and I'm just going to draw that water off. And that will also immobilize my root tip so it isn't going anywhere. Okay, so at this bit now, I want to squash my root tip. I'm not going to put the slide on and use a sideways motion. I'm literally just going to put it on and press it down. That's going to squash the cells in my root tip. I can hear the crunch almost. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that and I've probably got cells on both sides now of my slide. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to add my stain, just one drop on there one drop on there and <clears throat> I'm going to leave that for a minute and um, after a few minutes the stain is staining the DNA and I'm going to just extract the excess off there using a mounting needle over the top and then I'll view that under the microscope few things to think about with this experiment. Number one, why did you choose that method? So you need to evaluate what was good about the method you chose and why didn't you choose the other one. 
Second thing, you saw that in the experiment, I left it in for three minutes and 40 seconds, uh, so that by the time I came over here and removed it from the acid, it was actually four minutes. Why use acid? Why heat the acid? Um, what does the stain stain? Does it stain the whole cell? Which part of the cell is it that it stains? Why do we rinse the acid off? Why do we mop up the water? Um, make sure you're using the correct end of the root tip. So basically your lab book should reflect all these little decisions that you're making along the way. It should reflect that you've actually thought about that. Remember your lab book shouldn't be a perfect piece of work. The idea of it is that we're showing your progression all the way through. And if you went back to that lab book after two or three years and repeated the same experiment, you would do it a lot smoother without all the little interruptions that you have. Actually, this experiment takes about six minutes. When you do it in class, it's gonna take a lot longer. And it's all those little things that hold you up that you need to think about and to record in your lab book. Okay, and here's a slide I prepared earlier. Here you can clearly see the cells that are undergoing mitosis because they have a dark stained nucleus. The ones that don't um, have a dark stained nucleus are not undergoing mitosis. So you can calculate your mitotic index from this. If you look carefully, you can see some cells undergoing anaphase, you can see some cells undergoing cytokinesis, and you can see some cells in metaphase.